All right, you guys, how you doing? Um, well, this is it. Uh, this is probably the last recording of the term. Um, and we're basically going to talk about just some rendering um, that you guys can do in ZBrush to kind of, you know, just beautify your model, get it nicely presented for your final, and, uh, you know, have something you're proud of. Um, I have this fun little sculpt I did of a kind of caricaturized Dobby from Harry Potter. Very loose, uh, but I think it'll serve really nicely for this demonstration. Um, and a quick thing to mention, I have previously made a recording on rendering turntables. Um, I will make sure to include that link. I already sent that link out to you guys in a, a few weeks ago, um, but I'll make sure to include that link once more so you guys are aware that that video is there. So this is only gonna be talking about rendering and how to export images and things like that. Um, but for turntables and exporting a movie, um, you'll refer to that uh, additional video that, that's already there for you guys, okay? All right. <clears throat> so here we have our model. And uh, I'm assuming at this stage, you know, you really only wanna do this, you know, once you have your posed out model all intact, everything ready to go. Let's talk about rendering. So the first thing, the very first thing we're going to do is turn on the floor. And down here on my uh, on my GUI, we have this floor grid. If I go ahead and turn that on, you'll see this, this grid pop up that basically locks itself to the lowest point of your model. So that's a, something that automatically happens. So uh, keep that in mind because if your feet of your model are not completely flush, if one is lower than the other, then the, the grid is, or the floor is only gonna snap to that lowest point. So try to make sure your feet are completely um, flat, as, at least as, as consistent as they can be. Now in this particular case, I actually want the floor to be larger because I wanna be able to cast a shadow onto it. And right now, as you can see, it's, it's a pretty minimal floor. So I'm gonna go up to the draw menu right here. And if I scroll down, here you can see is that same button that I have down there in my GUI, the floor button, so I can turn it on and off from here as well. Um, and now what I'm simply gonna do is on the grid size, let's go ahead and expand this. So you can dial in a number if you want or just drag out the slider, it doesn't matter. So that should clearly be enough. Now the next thing that I wanna do before anything is I wanna basically um, store a camera. Okay, I wanna make sure that the camera is stored, but I also wanna set the document resolution. Okay, this is probably the most important thing. Um, think of the document resolution as what you're basically going to render as far as an image resolution, okay? So I'm gonna go up to document, and if I come down here, you'll see that currently my document is set to 1262, 971. Let's say I just want a nice standard 2K by 2K render, or let's say 1K by 1K. So I'm gonna set this to 1024, this to 1024. And you'll notice that it actually didn't do it. It's because this pro uh, button is turned on and that basically constrains proportions. So I'm gonna turn that off. And let's go ahead and set this one more. I'm actually gonna go to 2K, so I'll do 2048, then 2048 then you have to basically resize it. And it's gonna say, do you wanna resize this document? It's undoable, say yes. And this is what's gonna happen. It's gonna resize your document, but it's actually gonna stretch out the model that was there. It's gonna drop it to canvas and stretch it out. That's okay. If I hit Control N at this point, there's nothing there on the canvas, so I'm just gonna drag out my subtool, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and hit T, so that I'm back in edit mode. And now the canvas has been reestablished at a 2K resolution, but now I wanna be able to see the whole canvas in context. So I'm gonna go back up to the document menu. And where you see this zoom function here, if I just drag on top of that, I wanna drag it to where I see the canvas border. So you can see right now, in my GUI it's kinda of hard to see, but you can see that the outer gray is slightly darker than the interior gray. That just simply means that that's the border right there. 
that's the border of my image, my 2K image. So now I want to basically go in here and just really get this guy set up. So let's do something maybe like that. And once I like that, depending on whatever uh, camera you're looking through, go ahead and store that view. Okay, so I'm going to basically say store view. And now, no matter how I move this around, if I go back here to this custom one and just click it, it's going to pop right back into place. Now, that's super, super important um, for this process because as you're rendering, you may do additional render passes, which we'll talk about in a second, that allow you to do more, more polished things. Um, but right now, that's the first bit of the setup. Um, let me go ahead and pause the recording and we'll get started talking about render settings.